a listener production. Hi, I'm Sasha Barbagat. Welcome to this episode of The Briefing. When I say Mormon, a few things might come to mind. Maybe conservative beliefs, missionaries, Utah. Maybe your knowledge only amounts to the iconic stage play, The Book of Mormon. Or maybe like a lot of Aussies, the religion just isn't really on your radar. Well, that's all about to change. In recent weeks, Chatter has reached a fever pitch about a new reality show called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. It portrays, you guessed it, the everyday lives of a group of women who either identify as or once identified as Mormon. But if you're expecting a portrayal of sweet stay-at-home mums and doting husbands living their faith, you'd be sorely mistaken. I love the Mormon church, but there are a lot of rules that we have to follow. Have kids by the time you're 21, or in my case, at 16. Well, I'm like, this. Who is currently the breadwinner at home? All of us. Really? That's right. And then it just turned into this whole group is swinging with each other. Wait, what? And that's just the beginning. So why is the internet obsessed with these messy Mormon women? How are they changing the way their religion is seen by outsiders? And is it good, bad, or a bit of both? Someone who is well across the show and the rise of Mormon talk is Ruby Fennelly. She's a writer for Marie Claire and published a piece recently about the secret lives of Mormon wives. Ruby, welcome to The Briefing. Look, for a lot of people, they might just be learning about Mormonism and the women on this show, but you've been following all of this for a a while. Tell me to start off, how did these women become famous enough in the first place to score a TV show? Yeah, so I mean, it's a pretty big deal with the TV show and like reality TV and Mormonism generally, because it's quite a image controlled religious faith. Essentially, a woman called Taylor Frankie Paul started posting under a hashtag called Mum Talk, and she was doing it along with two other creators. And they were sort of sharing the hashtag, but also Mm cross-collabing on their posts. So slowly, like more and more kind of, I guess, Mormon influencer moms kind of joined posting under this hashtag and then cross-collabing because that's how they were sort of generating an audience. Um, But it was mainly these three women. Then at a certain point, Taylor Frankie Paul, so she had about 4 million followers on TikTok at this point. So it was a very engaged audience. Mm. And that was, you know, partly Mormons, but it was largely people coming for the kind of mum content, which was going really viral. And, you know, it was dancing. It was like mid-drift tops. It was a lot of like your typical TikTok viral content. Then when things really blew up for them and what led to the show deal was Taylor Frankie Paul went live on TikTok saying that there'd been a falling out within the three and she was getting a divorce from her husband because she'd been involved in something she referred to as soft swinging. Soft swinging. As in swinging partners? Yes. Okay. So swinging partners. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially swinging between, she said, three sets of partners, which involved anything except going all the way, which you can read into what that is. Mm -hmm. Um, And as long as your partner was in the room. And so what she said was, this has been going on for ages. There was partying, there was this and that. And she had breached the going all the way rule. She'd caught feelings for one of the guys and she'd had an affair. And this led to a kind of like fallout amongst the group. Obviously what happened then was that in disclosing that information, which she said on podcast, she didn't realize that it would go viral, um, which seems slightly disingenuous. <laughs> Crazy. Yes. Um, the other women in the group were then forced to kind of say like, you know, this wasn't going on. This wasn't this. They have all gotten divorced. So everyone in that group is now separated. So this is what kind of kicked everything off. Meanwhile, there were other women still involved in the mum talk sort of community um, who were then also having to say like, this wasn't me because Taylor kept those women anonymous, Mm -hmm. which was, you know, thoughtful, but then also cast aspersions on like absolutely everyone who was posting under the mom talk hashtag. At this point, people got interested in commissioning a show about it because it was very compelling. Mm. So the show was commissioned and eight women who weren't part of the original group agreed to be part of it. And then Taylor Frankie Paul was arrested for domestic violence. Mm. Um, that was when it was an incident between her and her new boyfriend. One charge was kept and it was while she was heavily intoxicated. So that was another kind of scandal that in the show they discuss kind of a little bit where the kind of mum talkers are like, well, 
at the end of the day, the soft swinging scandal was kind of great for engagement. We all made a lot of money out of it. Not ideal, but, you know, that's the trick. And then um, the drinking, the arrest, not so great for the Mormon image. Mm. So when you come into the secret lives of Mormon wives, it's kind of these women who are showing their lives as Mormons, but they're talking more about their business model and how they kind of rebuild their image because this is how they're making a lot of money. It's fascinating because what you've just described to me sounds like a pretty run-of-the-mill reality TV show. But then when you throw in the fact that they're Mormons, that's what makes it so insane and I think is what has captured so much attention. How different is their portrayal of Mormonism on this show compared to what the general public expects to see of people who say that they are Mormon? It's very different. So when I went into watching the show, it's cut like a standard reality TV show. There's the kind of traditional, like, you know, freeze frames. They all dress like Kardashians. And one of them says, look, like we dress in a way that goes viral on TikTok. So, you know, it's blonde hair. They talk about boob jobs. They're all wearing crop tops. And then I think one of the things that kind of highlights is um, they all speak quite openly about the difficulty of being women in 2024 trying to uphold the values of the church while, you know, being young women, like most of these women are from their early 20s to their early 30s. And they discuss pretty openly needing to get married very early because the Mormon faith, you know, doesn't believe in sex outside of marriage. And a lot of them are divorced. So they're kind of managing that. And one statistic that is quite interesting is that currently the Mormon faith has an issue where one in three people who are born in the Mormon faith are leaving the church. So these are kind of your millennial and Gen Z Mormons who Mm. are being portrayed on the show. On the show, there's drinking. There's obviously allusions to the swinging. They speak quite openly about sex, whether that's not having had an orgasm, wanting their partner to initiate more sex, One of them is offered a deal with a vibrator company and she's sort of like tossing up with her mom, whether that's, you know, empowering or too far outside of the Mormon faith. And the other thing that becomes obvious is that some of these women are, you know, observant Mormons and some of these women were raised within the church. They identify with Mormonism, but they're not necessarily devout followers. And Mm -hmm. I think that's something that becomes very apparent. As you watch it. Yeah. Look, the other thing that I'm finding interesting at the moment is that we're seeing so much Mormon content. We've talked on this show before about Trad Wives and Ballerina Farm and Nara Smith. And, you know, that portrays, you know, it's short for traditional wives. So it's these Mormon influences where, you know, they show, you know, the way that they raise their family and it's all very picture perfect and uh, wholesome content. And then you get (laughs) these women who are on this television show and it's almost like the polar opposite, but they're all saying that they're part of the same faith. I guess my question around that is, is this show actively challenging that picture of what a Mormon woman should look like? I mean, I think something that resonates about it is it is painting a picture of kind of imperfect motherhood. And some of these women really like they speak to that quite openly. So Whitney, who did the mission, she is at Temple, she is wearing the garments. She said, one of the great things about mom talk is when I had my first child, like it's meant to be a shining moment in a Mormon woman's life, but I completely lost my identity. Mm. So mom talk was a way for me to kind of engage with it. They're all imperfect mothers and they all speak quite openly about that. I think the appeal with trad wives is slightly different where they are painting a really idealized image of a very simple life that I think appeals to a lot of kind of women in my age group, millennials, who are, you know, struggling with burnout. They're on dating apps, you know, getting ghosted, navigating all of that. And it paints a kind of very simple, appealing, idealized life. But when you kind of get onto TikTok, that doesn't necessarily translate, which is where you see people kind of like picking away at characters like Hannah Neilman. Um, and the explosive drama around that, or, mm. you know, picking away at Nara Smith, whereas these women are sort of totally real and raw, and they're really speaking very openly about the kind of impossibility of integrating their faith with their lives. Mm. Why do you think the world is so obsessed with Mormons and Mormonism at the moment? I think Mormonism has always been quite compelling. You know, there was obviously 
big love. There was, you know, Under the Banner of Heaven was obviously a true crime novel that was then turned into a TV show. There's been kind of a long-standing interest in Mormonism because I think it hits a certain intersection, one where there's like heavy control around the body. There's like the wearing of special garments. There's the, you know, obviously the allusions to polygamy. And then there's the sort of like very early marriages. But they also, Mormonism is like, you know, they go on missions and they're encouraged to speak quite openly about it on the internet. So it's a religion that's been really adaptable to the internet. I think at this moment in time, women in my age group, millennial women, are feeling really conflicted about, you know, the lives that we're living. So, you know, burnout, motherhood, question marks around, you know, when you're going to have a baby, if Mm. it's okay to have a baby. And that's the kind of appeal of both the trad wife content, but also these kind of really openly struggling women who are talking really openly about these issues, about not wanting to get married young, about wanting to get divorced from their husbands, wanting to have orgasms within a kind of, I guess, exaggeratedly patriarchal structure. Mm. I suppose. Mm. What's the church's reaction been to the show and also the wider Mormon community? Has there been backlash or celebration of these women? So interestingly, the church has been, with other forms of media, really silent. Like the church doesn't respond frequently. And this series, while they haven't named it, has triggered an official response from the Mormon church where they've kind of said, this doesn't represent Mormonism. These women, the way they're living their lives is, you know, completely different Mm -hmm. to the church teachings. They acknowledge that the Mormon faith has like drawn a lot of interest across entertainment for a long time. They said, um, while this is not new, a number of recent productions, um, reading between the lies, depict lifestyles and practices blatantly inconsistent with the teachings of the church. Others irresponsibly mischaracterize the safety and conduct of our volunteer missionaries. We understand the fascination some in media have with the church, but regret the portrayals often rely on sensationalism and inaccuracies that do not fairly and fully reflect the lives of church members or the sacred beliefs that they hold dear. So there's been pretty heavy pushback. Mm. And on TikTok, one of the things that's driven engagement is, you know, Mormons sort of saying like, this is completely wrong and really like pushing back and rejecting it. And then the mum talkers saying like, we are pioneering a new era of progressive Mormonism where even the most conservative within the kind of women on secret lives of Mormon wives are saying like, this is a new thing. I'm talking about sex toys. I think like Mormon women should be able to live in a more open way. That was Ruby Fennelly speaking with me there. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Briefing. That is all for now. A reminder, we put out full eps of our weekend briefing chats on YouTube. Search Listener Newsroom to see them and don't forget to subscribe. You can also see our other video content on TikTok at Listener Newsroom. We're also on Instagram at The Briefing Podcast. And if you liked this ep, why not share it with someone you think might enjoy it too? I'm Sasha Barbagat. Catch you next time. Listener.